Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. So I, I felt that at some point rushing through the problem we did in lecture eight, um, I was not being consistent with the direction of rotations that I was drawing. So, and the way the, the coordinate systems were rotating with respect to each other was also not consistent. So I will redraw the problem in a simplified way, I guess. This was the uh, vertical shaft. And then I believe at some point you had the drawing on the board where this was the z time zero orientation, the one that is a dotted line. And this was a generic orientation of the arm. And so if this is the case, what I was doing was an angle theta that was positive in this direction, right? Even though I think I had the arrow the other way, but then I did the sketch this way, which goes, again, is not consistent. So I'm pretty sure that this is what we had, so I'm going to stick to this. Again, you can change the sign to the angle. I don't, it doesn't change anything, but you need to be consistent with your drawing, right? And I wasn't. So this was called O, this was the arm. And I think here at the end we had point Q, which is the center of the fan or the disc, whatever it is that it's attached there, it doesn't make a difference. So I want to do some kind of exploded view and actually move the disc down here because I think it makes it easier. And so this is still Q here. And then we're looking at something moving along a radial line, point P. I'll put it at the edge, but it doesn't have to be at the edge because it, it was actually allowed to move. And so this was what we had. And uh, the angle with respect to the shaft direction of the line QP was measured as phi in this direction, if I'm not mistaken. OK. So all I want to do is just redefine the, re the reference frames are the same and draw the uh, coordinate systems a little better because uh, I was, um, they were not consistent. So we said that G is the ground, and that is one reference frame. Then we said that the second, did we call it A? Yeah, I think so. A was the shaft plus arm, because this is a rigid, this is just one piece, right? Um, and so you can clearly see a reference frame there. You can even actually pick three points, like O, Q, and another point along the line, for example. And then the disc, or, or fan, uh, whatever we want to call it. OK, so the frames are the same. Now the coordinate systems, though. We had G with origin at O. We said EX, big EX, is along. O P O Q when theta is zero, right? And then we said E Z out of page. And as a consequence, E Y is E Z cross with the X. And I'm going to draw these bases here. This is E X. This is E Y. Correct? And this is a Z. Yeah. Coming out. I believe this is what we had. Say that again, I'm sorry. So. No, no, this is, this is actually the ground, so this never changes. Uh, uh, this, this, this shaft is, imagine this shaft uh, contained in the board, and then it comes out and rotates, and then it goes back in and contains, and, and keeps going like that. This does not change. And this is my choice. I could have picked EZ actually pointing up. Um, I'm not saying this is the best choice. It's just one possible choice. I'm trying to reproduce what I had, more or less. So this does not change at all with the ground. This is G. And then I, since there is a rotation about this e, little ey direction, I picked for, um, f 
for the second reference frame A, I said, OK, same origin. And uh, common EY. So little EY corresponds to big EY. This there is a rotation there. I believe we said EX along o OQ, right? At any time, not only at theta equals 0. And then, as a, and then EZ was going to be the cross product of what? EX and EY, right? And so the situation is basically the following. You have little e x pointing this way. And then you have little e y, which is corresponding to big e y this way. And then e z, little e z, somewhere like something like this, right? Make sense? OK. And let me do the last one before we actually draw the planes. And that's where the problem was. So the last one, I'm going to do it down here, is the disk. I started saying that I wanted u, little ux, along qp. It's fine. I can do that. I probably should have picked something else just to make my life easier, but it's a perfectly legit choice. Uh, and I'm going to use it because that's what we done last time. But probably I should have started saying ux corresponding to little ex, so I'm, I wasn't going to mix uh, the subscripts. But again, it's, it's perfectly fine if you, um, if you keep track of how they are oriented. So let's do it the same way. ux is along uh, qp. And then I said little ui corresponds to little ey, uh, ex. So this is the mixing of the subscripts, as I said. It's uh, unusual. It's perfectly fine. And then uz is, again, ux cross with uy. And so if you draw this, you see a uh, little ux here, right? Then you see the little ui. Sorry, this is not to scale at all. I just want to highlight that it's coming out and it's perpendicular to the disk, like this. And if I do the cross product, uh, you let me. Okay, this is u x. The cross product sees this u z, uh, you know, in perspective going in. Right? Do we see that? So if this is the disk. Ui is coming out perpendicular to the disk. U R, Ux and Uz are contained within the disk, are in the plane of the disk. OK. And uh, I think this is where we, uh, I was completely ignoring the direction of the rotations, actually. So if I start relating the big E's and the little E's coordinate systems, the difference between the two is the rotation of an angle theta about the little EY or big EY. So I want to draw what happens uh, in the uh, EX, EZ plane, right? If this is big EX and this is big EZ, which means that I'm looking from below in a certain way. So this is big EY going into the page. The way I see little ex and little ez is pretty simple. It's rotated by an angle theta. That's fine. I think this probably was OK. OK? There's nothing else to say here. Now, I think the error was now in the way I relate the little e's to the uh, little u's, um, they were not oriented correctly in the plane. Now, if I, if I look at what is happening between the disk and the shaft, there is only a rotation about little ui or little ex, of course. So I can look from that point of view, and I see the following. I see, for example, little ey like this, 
and little e z oriented this way, right? I, I can do that. If it makes my three-dimensional visualization a little easier, I, I can do this. And I'm imagining that I look at things from in front of the disk, right? And here I see little e x coming out, which is also corresponding to little u y. And I'm probably going to erase this because I need space. So what is happening? Little u x is now here, right? And this is the angle phi. And if that's the case, little uz is actually down here. Right? So this is where I was completely ignoring the fact that the rotation is positive, basically uh, against uh, little ui and little ex. That makes sense. So this is also phi. And we said that this was little ui and little ex. So this was where the fix was needed, I believe. Now these are coordinate systems that are fixed in the corresponding, in the correct reference frames, and they may not be the best choice, but best only means whatever makes your calculations easier. easier. Um, but they are a perfectly legit choice, and this is how they are related to each other, if I pick those. So you're more than welcome to pick different coordinate systems. Um, maybe, as I said, the suggestion could be Instead of calling this UI, call this UX, just to avoid mixing uh, subscripts, but that's, that's perfectly OK. And so at some point, there was a projection of these little UIs needed in, little, in the little e basis, and that is, was obviously probably wrong, because it wasn't depicted correctly, as it is now. Does now make a little more sense? Does this make a little more sense? So the way you solve the problem is exactly the same. Nothing else changes. It's just um, that the uh, coordinate systems were incorrect. So what I encourage you to do is, is finish it uh, with this, or just start from scratch. This is the setup. Uh, and, and, and come see me if you have any issues or problems. But the goals here, remember, were to find velocity of point Q with respect to the ground, acceleration of point Q with respect to the ground, velocity of P with respect to the ground, and acceleration of P with respect to the ground, where P can move along that line, right? And we call the distance QP, we call that distance R, it's a scalar. And what I told you is that VQ, AQ, once you find those, the velocity of P with respect to the ground is the velocity of Q with respect to the ground plus V. Q with, uh, I'm sorry, P with respect to Q, with respect to the ground. But this is nothing else than D, DT in G of R, P with respect to Q. And you do the transport theorem between the disk and G, right? Probably. And for the acceleration, is the same. P with respect to Q in G, okay? Where this is D dt in G of this vector, V, P with respect to Q in G. Now the ways you compute these two derivatives with the transport theorem, which reference frames you relate to each other, uh, it just depends on uh, how you express the vectors that you're trying to, uh, to, to derivate. So if RPQ is expressed, as it's probably very easy to do, in a basis which is fixed with a disk, then you will do the transport theorem between disk and the ground. But then I believe that at some point, even though the calculations may have had some errors because of this wrong uh, representation of the vectors, if at some point you end up with uh, VPQ that is expressed in a coordinate system which is now fixed with the arm, uh, with A, then for this one, you can also you know, relate A and G. You don't have to. The fact that the point P is moving um, on the disk uh, doesn't mean that you have to use, at, at all costs, the transport theorem between D and G. If what P is doing is represented by a vector 
expressed in a, in a coordinate system fixed in A, then you can do the transport theorem between A and, a and G. It, it doesn't matter. Make sense? Yes? Is there an error here? No. Here? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah. It's I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. Yes. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is this is the only why. Yep. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, concerns? No. So. I encourage you to start this from scratch. The setup is the same. The procedures are transport theorem again. Focus on Q first, then write the position of P with respect to Q and take its derivative with respect to the ground. That will give you the additional velocity that you uh, uh, add to VQ to get VP with respect to the ground. And same with the acceleration, and you're done. OK, thank you so much.